This is not an improvement. It's an improvement. There's a shiny in there. They added a Pokemon. It's already got 11 in the, the pool. <laughs> this is, look, I counted while you were reading off. This is a 12K egg pool. There are 12 Pokemon in it. One for each K. You're tuned into the GoCast podcast, your one-stop shop for updates, news, tips, and community in the world of Pokemon Go. Thank you for listening. Freshen up your wardrobe with an update to the style shop. Will details for this year's Go Fest stand the Go Test? Assemble the squad for July's Community Day Classic. There's a solstice on the horizon, and more on this episode of GoCast. Hello and welcome to the GoCast podcast, episode 239. It's June 13th, uh, I would say yet another Tuesday evening, but uh, not only did we not record last week, but the week prior to that, we recorded on a Wednesday afternoon. I think that's probably <laughs> what did it, Kyle. It just really knocked us out of our entire yeah. just just rhythm, you know. So, <laughs> um, but thank you very much for for tuning in, dear listener. I'm your host Chris, and as always, I'm jo- joined by my co-host Kyle. Hiya. Hey, Kyle. How you doing? I'm alive. I'm that's I'm good. here. I'm here. My man. Who could ask for more? Honestly, who could ask for more? <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's been it's been about 13 days since we've recorded this last episode, and uh, well, sorry about that. First of all, uh, it just was not in the cards for us last week. I got really busy with work. Kyle had a bunch of things pop up as well, and it just was not feasible. <laughs> so we decided, hey, why don't we just have a mountain of stuff to go through next week? And well, would you look at this? Yes, we do. We have so much news. Yeah, but a, a lot of it is really quite good, actually. Like, there's nothing on here that I'm like, it's not oh really boy, filler. I can't wait to hear what Kyle thinks about this, which is usually a good sign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, but really quick, we do have shout outs for two brand new patrons of ours. Thank you to Hayden and Jonathan. We appreciate your patronage. and We'll talk more about that at the end of the show. Thanks so much. OK, so last week, last two weeks, we set some goals. Um, and just for some context, this was we were heading into the gold research day. Uh, so some mm-hmm. of our goals are are around that. So, Kyle, for yourself, you wanted to catch four shinies. How did that go? Uh, for the research day, it did not go. I got two. OK, which ones did you get? Uh, Caterpie and Sableye. Nice. OK, good deal. What about gold research day? You did participate. Yeah, I did. I did. Did you finish the research? I feel like it's the big one. I did not pay for the research. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you still did the day. Let's give yeah. you points. And did you finish your level 45 challenge? No. Kyle. I, I didn't do a single raid in the last okay. two weeks. Not one. How could you? Actually, I could very easily see how you could very not Very easily, honestly. <laughs> there was nothing worth raiding for you? Not anything that I wanted to go out of my way with everything else going on i also didn't i did not play very much go at all outside of uh axie day so yeah yeah Yeah. okay gotcha sandy gas was in one star rates though i might have done a couple of those i mean i i should have i got a handful of sandy gas and that's about it that's what matters that's what matters good you got them uh for myself two shinies on research day i actually walked away with three and kyle you'll never guess which ones they were uh, Caterpie, Caterpie, Sableye. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we get okay. the same spread more or less. <laughs> That's okay gonna, with me. I thought you were going to say I got three Magic Carp. No, that would have been uh, awful. Um, though I think the winning combination would have been if I got like three Nose Pass. Uh, yeah. Having having now heard other podcasts and everybody else that we know in this space express their desires, I'm like, really, did I miss the mark by not being excited about Nose Pass? Yeah, you, you did, because I'm like, it, it is definitely not featured very much. So it's a fair thing yeah. to be excited about, I think. It's not, but I just couldn't see Nose Pass behind the brilliance that was Caterpie. So, yeah. you know, it's yep. hard. It's hard out there. Uh, 90 excellent throws. This was in pursuit of finishing my masterwork research. Not only in the time since then have I gotten the 90 excellent throws and finished that step, I have finished the entirety of the masterwork research and received my shiny Jirachi. I'm very happy to have that checked off. 
Um, it was great. But what wasn't great was my shiny Jirachi's IVs. It's like 11, 10, 10. Love it. <laughs> Thank you very much, universe. You've really uh, dealt me a hand. That's great. Um, and then hatch 50 eggs. Uh, I know this this week, this past week, actually, I hatched like 92 over Axu Community Day and then some. So, uh, and then prior to that, I think it was like in the low 40s. So I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to say yes, because I feel like in that actual calendar week, I did accomplish it. So, oh, but that's no fun. I'm going to say I didn't. So we tied for two out of three. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. If when I go back in like 10 years and I tally up all the points because I've got nothing else better to do, if I'm short by one, I'm going to regret this decision. You're not going to remember this one. So that's OK. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, well, anyway, let's hop into the news because, boy, howdy, is there a lot of it. Yo, what up? It's the news. Let's let's get a little small fry piece of news out of the way first. OK, the style shop update. It is exactly what it sounds like. The style shop got an update. <laughs> Trainers, get ready to upgrade your style. We're excited to announce that Pokemon Go's style shop the in-game shop where you can purchase avatar items, is getting an update. Soon, most trainers will be able to navigate their avatar item collections more easily. Whether you're looking through your tops, bottoms, socks, and footwear, or you want to shop for new avatar items, this update makes navigating the style shop a breeze. For example, new items will be marked in the style shop, helping you find a fresh look more easily. We hope that these features make managing your avatar item collections a snap. We can't wait to see all the great outfits and costumes you'll put together. That goes double for me. I can't wait to see what sort of wacky fun costumes we can see on people. I already see so many interesting things. I'm like, I had no idea those two items would clip like that. That is terrifying. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, like all just, just in short, it looks a lot nicer. It's easier to see more items at once, and it's easier to see things on your character more clearly as a result of the way things are, are laid out. I think they had a, a, a sale when this first came out, this update. I believe that is now finished. But either way, go take a look. You might find something that you wanted, like, you know, more socks or a fun hat, something like that. So many socks. So many socks. Kyle, is this interesting news to you at all? Other than you going like, oh, quality of life, that's neat. Uh, or are you just moving on with your life? I mean, I, I hope it's a sign that they're going to keep improving the shop. Mm -hmm. Like there's opportunities to actually change your avatar besides whether you have hair that's a certain color or not. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Different sizes, shapes, even limited selections. So this this gives me hope that that could happen. Yeah, I really need a I really need a barrel chested bear and a beer bellied man. Yeah. That's what I need so badly. Or a beard. I'll settle for a beard at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't actually think that's ever gonna happen. Sadly. Oh. You okay. gotta stick with your Santa Claus beard and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I, need a, I want a muscle suit. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's I mean but, the, the buzzwall muscle suit? No, 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 just a muscle suit. Oh, okay. Like uh, Monster Hunter. Yeah. So it's beach body <laughs> muscle suit. That's right. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Anyway, that, that's our first piece of news. Style shop update. Go update your style in the shop. All righty. We got, we got the deets. Now, I know we're a little behind the ball because these deets came out last week at some point in time, but we're that's excited okay. to talk about them. Yeah, that is. You're right, Kyle. It is okay. The Go Fest details. Now, I, I got to say. First of all, you know, credit where credit is due. The way that this information was organized was very clear um, in comparison to the way this information was presented in the past for similar events, a la Go Tour, a la previous Go Fests. So hats off to the team that put this together. It seems pretty straightforward. Not that there aren't questions, because of course there are, <laughs> but I kind of you get it, you know. Anyway, so uh, the details here, London and Osaka are happening the same weekend. And so they will have the same GoFest experience. And when we say that, we mean like, you know, th the same biomes and the same yeah. shiny releases and Spons wild encounters, and stuff like that. Yeah, right. 
exactly. So when are these two GoFests happening again? Uh, they're happening on August 4th through the 6th uh, in London, uh, between the locations of Brockwell Park and Greater London at large. And for Osaka, it'll be at Expo 70 Commemorative Park and Suita and Osaka cities, uh, greater area, kind of like that. So um, it's the same sort of idea. Park, city, park, city. For New York, it's the same deal. So uh, the park experience, let's talk about this. Diancy will be uh, debuting during GoFest this year. Don't worry, though, if you're going to be doing the global event on the 27th and the 28th, you will also get to encounter Diancy. Uh, but if you're at these go fests, you get them first. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is or rather there are some biomes at both London and Osaka. The Dark Jungle, which will feature Heracross, Survivor, Dupider, Pumpkaboo and more. The Fairy Garden will have Cacnea, Petalil, Spritzy, Dedene, and more. Hypnotic Glacier will feature Glarian, Mr. Mime, Snorlax, Snowy Form, Cast Form, Elgium, and more. Volcanic Island, which will have Aerodactyl wearing a satchel. Oh my gosh. Which is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I love my little mail carrier Aerodactyl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hunt that. That's the Snorlax yeah. with the cowboy hat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> Um, Sir Skit, Lucario, Durant, and more. Volcanic Island is like popping off with those just few spawns. That's good. And then all habitats will feature a Pikachu wearing an amethyst crown, unknown A D I M N O exclamation point, and Sigilyph. So last year we had Tropius, I believe, who was the I don't remember who the regional was last year, but we got one. And this year it is Sigilyph. So good opportunity to get one. There will be collection challenges, go snapshot for a chilly surprise. No idea what they're talking about there. Field research. You may even encounter Carbink. Carbink is featured big for this event because of its uh, narrative tie to Diancy. So expect to see Carbink and, you know, tucked away. Sounds like they'll be in field research. The city experience. All Pokemon featured in the event habitats will appear in the wild throughout greater London or, you know, Suida or Osaka cities during the day on your ticket. So if you have, you know, your ticket experience for a Saturday, regardless of if you're in the morning or afternoon of that day, the other part and throughout the rest of it, the city experience will have all those spawns. But you just can't like target them. You can't like go to a biome and target what you're looking for, which like is both good and maybe bad if you like are in the park experience in the morning and you want to shiny hunt satchel aerodactyl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'll probably be spawning. And probably quite a bit more than other stuff because it is the featured spawn. Snorlax with a cowboy hat was pretty, pretty common, actually, in the city spawns. So I hope that this translates the same way. And then they said, stay tuned for additional information. That's kind of, uh, that's strange. Yeah. I actually have no idea what that could be. <laughs> so who knows? Exclusive bonuses, half hatch distance for eggs placed in incubators during the event. Up to six special trades can be made during the day on your ticket, no matter where you are in Greater London. Reduced Stardust costs for trades. Up to nine free raid passes from spinning photo discs to gyms. Two times catch candy. Now, of course, you can also buy the ticket add-ons, which will you know amplify some of these things like down to quarter hatch distance for the egg enthusiast. And I think you get even more raid passes out of the raid lover one. So bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. Okay, so that's, again, for London and Osaka. For New York City, between Randall's Island Park and Greater New York on August 18th through the 20th, Diancy will be, will be debuting at GoFest this year again. That's right. Yes, so if you are at New York, you'll have it a whole week before everybody else does. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> here are the biomes. They're slightly different, if you can believe it. They didn't just swap out, like, one or two things. They're different names and all that good stuff prehistoric volcano coming out swinging aerodactyl wearing a satchel my man Dowermaka, arkin axu and more again the volcanic one is that's like that's a really good biome it's awesome uh poison swamp scroopy venipede squelp noibat and more cursed treasures sableye chimeco yamask golet and more that one's not bad either yeah, yeah. i mean more yamask 
for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. So I know that du- Dupiter or Dupiter, whatever, is is being uh, released or debuted in Osaka in London. And Golette is coming out in New York City. I think there's others as well, but those two are the ones that I remember the most of. Yep. Oh, so I that's cool. Shiny, shiny Golette. That's that's my Dude, Dupiter, New York though. goal. Dupiter shiny is really good. Yeah, but Golette is a ghost. So True. <laughs> True. And we also don't have Dupiter in our spawn pools so that's a shame and then the last habitat is athletic field where you can see the hitmons hanging out hitmon lee hitmon chen hitmon top and to hitmon top it off makuhita i'm gonna and more. stay as far away from that biome as possible <laughs> i cannot express how little interest i have in that biome what do you think the end more is because it could be like what machop and uh because uh, it's not going to be like scraggy or you know pan cham or anything like that like I, yeah i mean I machop know. and meditate what about um, sure. timber maybe timber i feel like they would have put timber on that list above makuhita probably um, yeah definitely above makuhita <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what, what if they surprise us what if we're like hey these aren't half bad and then i'm sure the rest of it's going to be filler and the and more is actually the surprise, and it's awesome. And it's Riolu spawning in the wild. Whoa! <laughs> oh, man, you'd have to hold me down, dude. That would be crazy. And then for all habitats, it will feature Pikachu wearing an amethyst crown, the same unknowns as the other GoFests. Again, they are A-D-I-M-N-O, exclamation point, and Sigilyph will be available. I did forget to mention that another shining debut is exclamation point, unknown. Yeah. Uh, so that, here's a question for you because I'm dumb. Okay. What is what is the spelling? It's not spelling Diancy. What? It's diamond. Diamond. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Diamond. Fine. Look, I'll take anything to actually get an unknown M. Finally. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's gonna be one big step for closer to that platinum. <laughs> it's gonna be big for both of us. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be having our moment at, at New York. It's going to be like, we M, M. Q, and Y, both of us. We, we sure do. Uh, I'm going to be excited to potentially shiny hunt the exclamation point, but I feel like it'll be pretty rare. Uh, probably uh, something tells me we're not going to get quite so lucky as we did uh, last GoFest. No, no, maybe Because that was the best part of the entire GoFest, in my opinion. All the shiny unknown? No, all the, the fact that for two minutes – Every hour, it just changed all the spawns to unknown. That oh, was, yeah. That was great. I, I hope they do that again. That was cool. It yeah, was very cool. I know. Like, everybody be I like, whoa, know. you know? <laughs> it makes it really easy to get a specific shiny, though, because of the way the game works. That's true. Um, and then, you know, of course, th- with us at New York, we'll also have collection challenges, go snapshot for a chili surprise, field research that will feature carving. The city experiences the same deal. All Pokemon mentioned in those habitats, including the ones in the end more, uh, will be available in the greater city of New York as well. We also got the stay tuned for more information. So whatever that is, honestly, <laughs> I mean, it'd be nothing. It could, it could be anything. I mean, it could be, you know, there was raid tours last year. I don't know. And they're, you know, the, the notable trainer stuff. Do you think they're going to tuck all that in there? I, don't know. I, I keep my things. and more expectations to a minimum for sure. Okay. It'd be cool if there was like a big team rocket thing where like in the city, they're trying to like invade go fest and the research happening there. And so like the, in the city team had their own challenges as a group to overcome team rocket during the day or something. That'd be neat. But you know, who can say, <sighs> who can say we're limited here, but only by our, uh, by our imagination. The exclusive yeah. bonuses are the same as they were in the other two GoFests. Half hatch distance for eggs, six special trades, no matter where you are in the area, uh, reduced Stardust costs for trades, up to nine free raid passes, and two times catch candy. Again, all of these can be improved slash modified with ticket add-ons. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, you're like, Chris, this is great, but most of us are just going to be playing global because we, we're not working on travel or anything like that. Like, I'm just going to pop out into my local park on the 26th through the 27th. I think I said wrong dates earlier. 26th through 27th for global. Uh, so let's talk about that. 
Your wish is our command. You got it. Ticket holding trainers. There's going to be a free version of this and a ticketed version of this, just to start off. Ticket holding trainers will be able to complete special research to learn more about the jewel Pokemon and get an opportunity to encounter it. That's DNC. On Saturday, for all trainers, regardless of a ticket or not, special Pokemon will appear in four unique habitats, which will rotate hourly during the event. That is the clarity that I wanted last year. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. There's no, there's no room for interpretation. That's great. <laughs> so here are the four biomes. The first one is Quartz Terrarium. Pikachu wearing a Quartz Crown, Heracross, East Sea Shellos, Baneri, and more. The Pyrite Sands. Pikachu wearing a Pyrite Crown, Trap Inch, Joltik, and more. Malachite Wilderness. Pikachu wearing a Malachite Crown. Bet you didn't see that coming. Roselia, Oranguru, and more. Aqua Marine Shores. Pikachu wearing an aquamarine crown. One more curveball, huh? Meryl, West Sea, Shellos, Gumi, and more. Gumi's getting that shiny. Let's go. <sighs> Exciting stuff. Can we these don't these don't appeal to me as much as the other biomes did. Can we just take a moment to realize that they are using this end of summer go fest here to give us not one, not two, but five new hat Pikachu. Yes. My my inventory is never going to recover from this. With the one in... <laughs> Global has Pikachu four... Amethyst. Global has four ones, and then New York, Osaka, and oh London my all have the same one. I thought that one was one of the four there no. is five amethyst oh. is for the in person so you can have a unique pikachu no one else okay. can have that okay and then these four i kind of like that setup that's a good way it's to... too many Pikachu. no please. no pishaw you've Who's already never... gotten god knows how much money for your inventory space and i don't even have that many pikachu right now <laughs> i have 68 <laughs> pikachu and that's uh... that's too many and I can't bring myself to get rid of some of them. Pikachu. You probably have what? 110? 172. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a lot of Pikas, man. Yeah, see? That's a lot I'll, of Pikas. Yeah. Yeah, going through this list, a lot of them are from um, Hoenn Tour, and I just haven't cleared out, like, my my uh, 20th of them, you know? I need to do that still. Oh, geez. Um, but we've also got like a bunch of new shinies with this event. Like I mentioned, it's Gumi. Uh, Oranguru is also going to be shiny. I believe uh, Shellos is also going to be shiny. So that's pretty cool. And the um, regional is going to be Heracross in the Quartz Terrarium. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so Sunday, the next day, for all trainers, regardless of ticketed status, all Pokemon that appeared in the wild during the first day of the event will also appear during event hours on the second day. There are no rotating habitat hours on the second day, so these Pokemon may appear at any time. If you participated last year and the year before that, this was the case as well. Bonuses and features. This stuff is for all trainers. We're going to get to the ticketed stuff in a minute, so don't you worry. But these bonuses and features will be for everybody, regardless of ticketed status, during the event time. Lure modules will last for one hour. Remote raid pass daily limit will be increased to 20 per day on both Saturday and Sunday. Smart move. Be cool if they also put them on sale, but you know. Trainers will be able to enjoy field research themed around the different Pokemon habitats. Cool stuff. Take snapshots during the event. You never know who might show up. Probably Carbink. I hope so. That'd be a decent amount of encounters with Carbink. Mm-hmm. I'd be down for that. Be done. All right, so here we go. This is the, the juicy stuff. Ticket holder exclusives. Special research working towards an encounter with Diancy. So it appears that if you want to, you know, work on Diancy and get this, this research before in like six months from now, they'll probably make a free research for everybody that gets it. You'll still have to get the ticket if you want to encounter a DNC at Global. Mm -hmm. Global Challenge Arena during each habitat hour on Saturday. Ticket holding trainers around the world will be able to work together to complete a challenge. If the challenge is completed in time, a special bonus will be unlocked 
for the remainder of the hour for ticketed trainers. I always thought these were rad. There's a lot yeah, of hype, I mean, the camaraderie, you know, <laughs> the the chance to shame people for not doing their part when you can see your friends list. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, increase, sorry, not increase. Uh, I guess they will be increased, but incense encounters for ticket holders. The following Pokemon will be attracted to incense, excluding daily adventure incense during event hours. Shiny unknown M will make its global debut. Uh, shiny, I believe. Wait, no. Yeah. Shiny unknown M after appearing during the Pokemon go fest events in London, Osaka and New York city in the quartz terrarium. In addition to the other stuff, if you've got your incense going, his suing Rowleth, Plus unknown A D I M N and O. In Pyrite Sands, you'll have an, a chance to encounter Pawnyard or any of the aforementioned unknown. Malachite Wilderness, Carnivine, another regional. This is an important one. And then that suite of unknown, as mentioned before. And then lastly, Aquamarine Shores for a chance at a Pachirisu, which is also a regional. Uh, and then any of the aforementioned unknown. I do see a distinct lack of the exclamation point unknown. Yeah. So that, that I didn't realize that that was left out from global. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, exclusive bonuses for ticket holders only. Increased chance of encountering shiny Pokemon. Check your expectations at the door. Up to six special trades can be made each day. Level up your elite collector medal by completing uh, uh, habitat-themed collection challenges. Up to nine free raid passes for spinning photo discs at gyms and special seven-kilometer eggs, which I don't believe we know what are in there yet. So, interesting. Okay. What could be special that they would put in seven-kilometer eggs that would make people interested? Exclamation point. Unknown. Put unknown in the eggs. I mean, God. that would get people hatching eggs. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it would. Yeah, it absolutely would. Uh, Could IVs? I mean, not that it matters, I suppose, but I don't know. More shiny chance? Who knows, man? <laughs> it depends on how it depends on how it's balanced on the instant spawning rate, too. Yeah, it. Yeah. So anyway, I've done a lot of talking. Kyle, let, let's hear from you. Let's let's talk about the uh, destination go fests really quick. Now, this sounds promising. Are, are you ready to, to gut check that <laughs> assumption? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It is par for the course. Sounds good. Like. There's no downside there. One thing worth noting, I think, is the up to six special trades. They do specify doesn't matter where you are. Mm -hmm. We had a huge problem in Seattle. I don't remember if it was in Germany uh, as well about people not being able to do their special trades, even if they were in the park because somebody else didn't have a ticket or because they weren't supposed to be in the park at that time because they had the city experience. So... That's good. They pointed it out. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it actually works that way. Hopefully we're not like being too optimistic there, but yeah, I hope so too. Cause that was a big bummer. Yeah. People that ha like were meeting with friends in the park that didn't have a park ticket that day, but like, they popped in for 30 minutes to meet them and make a trade. They just couldn't do it within yep. the, the geo fence. Nope. Couldn't so, do it. Yeah. And like, it didn't matter if you wanted to sacrifice your city time or whatever. Didn't matter. Yeah, which is kind of silly. Is like I'm already making the sacrifice. Just let me. Yeah, thankfully for Seattle, it was like you know the, the center was in the middle of the city too, so it was yeah. not too too bad. But yeah, yeah, uh, man, but you still have to find your friend. That could be a, that could be an hour task. <laughs> yep, <laughs> uh, I'm excited for Sigilif. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that'll be good. Uh, so we're you and I are looking for those unknown the Sigilif. And then uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're probably going to be looking for some of those new shinies. I know I'm going to be looking for that Aerodactyl wearing a satchel shiny. That'd be sweet. I mean, I would like that. But my goal for New York is shiny Golette, preferably two. Okay. Respect. Yeah. Now, what about global? Uh, 
uh, global. I don't want more Pikachu with hats. I know Pikachu. that these are actually really great. Like, the people who like hat Pokemon, this is awesome. No, oh, yeah. no shade for that. It's great. Happy for you. But like, I don't want them, but I can't get rid of them. <laughs> I need three. I need three of each. <laughs> but yeah. it's like, I can't even help it sometimes. Like, I would need more because I'm like, what if somebody wants this? Like, I probably have like five or six Pikachu with a Rayquaza hat because somebody may want that eventually yeah. just for their hat collection. I don't know. I don't trade with anybody. What am I talking about? Probably not but, coming back. Like, I just don't see that yeah, happening. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm. Uh, Shiny Joltik is a is a new one, I believe, as well oh, yeah. in yeah. Global. So I'm actually really excited for that. Um, anything with like what's happening otherwise? No, it's all pretty expected. Uh, good bonuses for all trainers on the first day. So that's great. Versus it only being paid experience. So I will say it is a little strange that the global challenge arena stuff is for ticketed only and not for everybody. I mean, it's strange, but only a little bit because you are going to get bonuses. So you are going to get, you know, two times catch experience yeah, or, you know, 50% extra stardust or whatever they, whatever bonus they give, obviously. So it kind of fits with buying the ticket to take part, but yeah. All right. I do see where that, that can feel bad. It's not that it feels bad. It just seems strange, you know, like, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be one thing if like everybody can participate, but like only the ticket holders get the bonus or something like uh, maybe that, maybe that feels bad. I don't know, <laughs> but who, you know, who can say uh, it might also work that way. It might just be written this way and we don't, we're not getting it. Yeah, right. But or it could be like, they're setting it up like that so they can more easily judge the numbers they have to put to make mm. sure that it's reasonable mm. for people to get. It's like, all right, we sold 55 million tickets for global go fest. So now mm. we know we can set the number to a hundred million in an hour and they'll knock it out of the park or something yeah. silly like that. Yeah, that's fair. And Saturday or Sunday is it's fine. I, the, the incense are, it i don't care about this at all <laughs> really okay, that was I, the part that i was pretty i was about to say is like pretty good like two no. two regionals man Carnival i mean and yes Risu. that's no they're not bad not bad mm -hmm. let me correct myself not bad i just don't care <laughs> i already yeah. have both of them so it, it's cool that they're fitting two in there but they're also in with the unknown yeah and it's kind of like, what's the spawn going to be like? Am I going to get a lot of unknown that I've already been catching from the previous day? Or am I going to get the regionals that I now want? Right. Yeah, I guess you can almost make like a toss up. Like, do I want to get the ticket or do I not want to get the ticket and not dilute my my uh, spawn pool on incense with unknown? <laughs> yeah, it's who knows? <laughs> That's a personal decision right there. Uh, but Ponyard in Pyrite Sands. That's a more unique opportunity than ever to shiny hunt, target that, you know? Make your 12K eggs even worse. That's right. Get the shiny poniard during GoFest, and then every 12K egg is just another jab. Let's go. Yeah. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm here. Let's just tank the value completely. Yeah. Let's just go. Let's have a series of community days of just Pokemon that are in 12 kilometer eggs. Let's, let's just gut the whole system. <laughs> I mean, you're two thirds of the way there. I mean, yeah. no, it's not that much, but it's it's several. Well, we're going to be talking about uh, 12 kilometer eggs at the very end of the news section, if you can believe it. So, OK, so those are all the details for GoFest. Pretty exciting stuff. It's really looking it's looking nice. Um, and, you know, even if you can't make it out to one of the in-person events, the global is sounding pretty good, pretty hefty, something good to chew on, even if you're not going to pick up a ticket. Um, but you know, the ticket itself without like add-ons and things like that for other stuff is really not that expensive. I mean, it's not nothing, um, but it should be, I, I think it's worthwhile in this case, from what I'm seeing here with the bonuses, if this is what you're going to be doing for those two days, I would probably really recommend <laughs> getting the ticket. Yeah. You'll get, I mean, you'll get a lot of it. If go is what you do and you like to spend money on it, 
nine raid passes per day alone kind of pays for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. The and more. They didn't mention raids at all. We don't know oh, what's in raids at all. That's for true. This, this entire oh, thing for in person right. and global. You're right. I apologize for anybody sitting in their car right now. Like, what about the raids? Yeah, no, that's a good point, man. Um, I just was loving how simplified this was. And I'm too busy pretending that raids don't exist right now. So Yes, me too. But <laughs> like they could make it worthwhile. Obviously, Diancy, you know, is gonna be the mythical, yeah. but what yeah. legendaries are you gonna make us raid? I mean you know people want to. It'd be cool to see like Car bank and raids at the beginning of the event, and then maybe Diancy at the end. But I mean, no, we're gonna we'll have the Pikachu with its hat in in tier in, one, yeah. in tier one, and then uh, last year at Seattle we had Darkrai and uh, the Bananager Cresselia. <laughs> yeah, it's Bananager. That's right. Did we have Giratina or O? No, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know who they could put in raids right now. It hmm. could really be anything. Yeah, you're right. I'm almost embarrassed that I didn't think about that with the end more. Yeah, this is a little light, isn't it? Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'd also like to know what's in the eggs, y'all. Yeah. What's I mean, in that the will... eggs? Yeah. Come on. Okay. Well, that's all we got for now. So it's from the sounds of it, we'll probably have a part two update we got to do for these. Or maybe even three if they stretch it out and they're like, here's raids. At the end of like, oh, here's eggs. It's all two kilometers and it's all Pikachu with hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I could see them doing, quite honestly. Uh, but let's move on to, depending on who you are, arguably and equally exciting news. July Community Day Classic. Trainers Community Day Classic returns in July. This event will feature the tiny turtle Pokemon Squirtle. We're excited to feature Squirtle, Pokemon number seven, during the seventh anniversary of Pokemon Go. Ah, ah it's cute. Ah, it's cute. They did it. Okay. Woo. Okay. Yeah. But good. did they? But pretty did good. they do all of it? We'll see. When? Sunday, July 9th, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. local time. I guess we're never going back to 11 to 2. Okay. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's, it's kind of rough. The weather. Yeah, that we're going into to be out at two to five right now. Yep. Yeah, I just I've seen some people be like, you know, by this time we usually swapped. Yeah. What's the dealio? So I don't know. Maybe we're just not. Who knows? Featured attack. You guessed it. Hydro cannon. If you evolve into Blastoise from two to seven p.m. local time. Field research. Squirtle themed field research will be available. Catch Squirtle to earn an encounter with Squirtle wearing sunglasses. They did it, Kyle. They, they brought they it back. Did. They was brought it back. Was very surprised. Yes. Was very surprised yes. to see it. Oh, it's awesome. It is surprised still the, to see the, it. Love to see it. It is still the not quite Squirtle Squad glasses, but no, it's, it's still good. No. And they're aviators. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. And yes, dear listener and fellow trainer. Those sunglasses persist through evolution. They so do. Can, I have a. Yeah. I still have a Blastoise from way back. <laughs> That's right. Is it a shiny Blastoise? No. Oh, I, I have shiny with glasses, but I never evolved it. So the thing with this, though, for me is uh, this event would be everything, everything, Kyle, mm -hmm. if they finally let us have the sunglasses on Mega Blastoise. Uh, <laughs> you know, my, uh, my Mega see. Blastoise is the one with the glasses, so they go away every <laughs> time. I'm like, oh. But I also kind of like the idea that, like, in his transformation animation, it zooms in, he takes off his sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> and then he evolves. Good stuff. Uh, there's going to be a Community Day special research story, Squirtle Community Day Classic, for $1. And it'll be, you know, the usual sort of stuff. Event bonuses. For this one, it'll be quarter egg hatch distance, lure modules, and incense, excluding daily adventure incense, of course. Activated during the event will last for three hours. And take a few snapshots during the Community Day Classic for a surprise. It'll be Squirtle. Chances are it'll be Sunglass Squirtle, actually. I'd put money on that. <laughs> I'd put money on that. That'd be amazing. It would be. It'd be really great. So, uh, you know, when this event first came out, the first actual Squirtle community and we got glasses, the shiny status of the, the Squirtle was tied to the field uh, research that was 
to, to the specific stop that gave the field research. So if we both spun the same stop and got the same task and we completed it, we would both get the shiny Squirtle and anybody else that spun and completed the task from that Pokestop. Now, the last time this was back, I don't remember if that was still the case or not. And so therefore, I don't know if whether I can say or not, this time will be that way. Do you remember? Um, I don't I don't think are so. You I think sure? the, match, the first time, yes, I'm positive. I thought it was only fixed that they gave the glasses, not that the shiny was fixed. No, all the field research tasks had sunglasses and shiny chance was also tied. Mm, okay. I'm I'm only gonna question you because I want to see what the the shinies look like how many shiny with glasses do you have let's see and you can check the date obviously i know you may have traded some away but i only have one with glasses i also only have one with glasses okay was it from 2018 or did you get it the second time that it existed? 2018 where we both played that day okay yep okay uh i don't think that's how it worked the second time but i honestly couldn't tell you that said niantic has gotten a lot better at making their research not have to be guaranteed <laughs> shiny I or guess. be fixed shiny. So, yeah. I guess, but at the same time, like I kind of liked it. Of it course, nice. it's so much better, but... Yeah, calling out. It was fun. People yeah. screaming, running. Man. Anyway, I'm a big fan of the quarter uh, egg hatch distance. That's great. And, of course, the sunglasses. So, there's that. Get excited, trainers. This is going to be a good Community Day Classic in July. Lastly, we got another event solstice horizons and this one is looking pretty all right i'm excited for this one trainers take the opportunity to see what pokemon are active during your favorite times during the solstice horizons event featuring pokemon associated with day and night when friday june 16th at 10 a.m to sunday june 15th sorry 25th (laughs) we're not going back in time until sunday june 25th at 8 p.m local time so it's going to be this friday going to next Sunday. Wild encounters during the day will consist of Ladyba, Murkrow, Solrock, Drifloon, Purloin, Sawaddle, Cottony, Petalil, Fomantis, which is having its shiny debut with this event, and Hisuian Sneasel. At night, you can expect to see Oddish, Spinarak, Mistrevis, Lunatone, Stunky, Venipede, Fungus, Phantump, Fomantis, Fomantis is in both day parts. That's nice. And regular Sneasel. So, so Hisuian's during the day and regular old Sneasel is during the night. Special research is in the stars. Starry Skies, a new special research story starring Cosmog. Oh, what a tongue tie <laughs> that was. Will be available to trainers level five and up at no cost. Just log in between Friday, June 16th at 10 a.m. and Sunday, June 25th at 8 p.m. local time to begin. Those times, incidentally, are just the that's the length of the event. So open your game during the event. Plus, for US five dollars or the equivalent pricing tier in your local currency, you can play through Starry Skies a second time and encounter Cosmog again. You can purchase a ticket for a second to go at this special research story during the event and until June 25th at 8 p.m. local time. So just to summarize, you want another Cosmog? You can get one for free. You want another, another Cosmog? You can get it for $5. (laughs) Man, when you say it like that, it doesn't sound as good. (laughs) I mean, it is good, right? And it's not that they shouldn't make money off their game. And Kyle and I were talking briefly about this before we even hit record. It's like, does this sound, does this feel bad or sound bad? I really don't think so. But when you say it, like I just put it like on paper, it sounds not good. It sounds pay to win, but it's, it really isn't. I don't know. I think, I think the stance that I have is that if you were to get more Cosmog another way, Mm -hmm. you would have to raid for it. And while technically a raid is cheaper than five dollars until they decide at such time that they are going to allow unlimited access to Cosmog, which I imagine is probably quite a discussion with the Pokemon company. Mm -hmm. uh, This is still kind of within the same ballpark of getting Cosmog. Traditionally, we'll say through the game. Which doesn't make it great, but. It doesn't really make it any different than it's been. We will have to eventually revisit it for the shiny. So, yeah. And 
you need a lot. Like you, you need to be able to do more of these, whether they let us raid Sogaleo and Lunala or whether they let us get more Cosmog. They, for the candy? Yeah, for the candy and also like more copies. Why why would this be the only legendary in the game that you can only have three of? I think example? it's I think it's more likely that these special research will probably give us a, a heap of candy at the end is like a lump sum, right? Which mm. which is what they did the last time. And then they'll let us raid um Lunala and Solgaleo in the future. I feel like that's cleaner and probably fits into their framework better. I, mean, I, I agree with you. I think those, those yes. are problems. I think they would probably rather just avoid them, you know? But how do you address the problem of Shiny Cosmog then? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't There's know. There's no good I mean, solution, research unfortunately. Tasks? Curse Nintendo or curse the Pokemon company for making a legendary that actually evolves. Yeah, y'all thought you were being cute, and now Pokemon Go is in shambles. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Doesn't need the help. Just kidding. Uh, event bonuses during this event. Two times Stardust for catching Pokemon, and Lunatone and Solrock will both appear in the wild during the event. Uh, so regardless of your location, that's cool. It's cool, cool, cool. Some raids. Raids aren't missing from this event. Nope. One-star raids. And Kyle, just because we're documenting it for pos- uh, for you know posterity, right? The S and star was capitalized this time for each of them. For each of them, yeah. Okay. I'll have you know the previous event and the event prior to that they were lowercase. Why, I, Niantic? Listen to me. I'm watching you. <laughs> Who's your copywriter? Who's your proofreader? I'm, I'm watching you. Pay that intern another dollar, please. <laughs> But you know which ones never change? Mega and raids are always capitalized. Sometimes the R in raids, if it's from five star, three star, one star, sometimes that R is also not capitalized. What's going on? Give me your style guide. I got to know. Right. <laughs> I got to know. All right. Anyway, one star raids, capitalized or otherwise. Sneasel, Hisui and Sneasel, Rock Ruff, and Fomantis. Three star raids will feature your favorite owl, knocked owl, or maybe second favorite if you're a big fan of Hoot Hoot, or even third favorite, Decidueye, Rowlet, all that good stuff. Uh, and Espeon, Umbreon, and Staraptor are also in three star raids. Five star raids will feature Nihilego, and it will have its shiny released during this period, which is great for the first time. And in mega raids, always capitalized, ladies and gentlemen, Mega Sceptile. <laughs> Let's go, Evergreen Tree Tail. <laughs> Big fan. Field research task encounters. Yeah, there'll be some themed field research tasks available. And then there's a collection challenge, so make sure you do that. But wait, there's more. Team Rocket is back. Team Go Rocket is back, y'all. When? Wednesday, June 21st at 12 a.m. to Sunday, June 25th at 1159 p.m. local time. They love nesting these Team Go Rocket takeovers and other events. It's something else. Save Shadow Regirock. Or don't. <laughs> it's up to you, trainer. I don't think anybody's going to judge you if you just say, no, I'm going to sit this one out. Giovanni, take your W. <laughs> you may have a rocky road to victory ahead as you face off against Giovanni and his Shadow Reggie Rock. A new special research story will be available at the beginning of this event. Progress through it to receive a super rocket radar and chase down Giovanni. You can claim this special research until the end of Pokemon Go Hidden Gems on September 1st at 10 a.m. local time. So even after this event is over, if you just don't play during it, you can still get this special research as long as you log in before the end of the season, which is sweet. That's good. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Good. And then bonuses Team Go Rocket will appear more frequently in stops and in balloons, and you can TM frustration. So those of you that were um, upset that we could not do it during the, the last Shadow event with Shadow Mewtwo, here's your chance. Especially for those of you that just got a bunch of Shadow Mewtwo, you're looking to, you know, kit out. Now's the time. There's going to be a bunch of new Shadow Pokemon as well. The grunts and the leaders will be having new Pokemon, and the list is actually kind of exciting. A Lolan Geodude, Ladybot, Hitmontop, Glammeow, and actually I think just one Pokemon is exciting. It's Gibble. Shadow Gibble is coming. Yeah. It's a big deal. It is. It is. Yeah. And then lastly, maybe not as big of a deal. 12 kilometer eggs. 
Larvitar, Absol, Scroopy, Sandile, Scraggy, Ponyard, Volibi, Dino, Pancham, which is having its shiny released, which is awesome. Inkay, which I think is new to this pool, Skrelp, and Salandit. Yeah, so I think That's there was two changes pool. to that pool. That, that, sure, dude, that sure is a 12k pool, you're right. All right, so Mr. Kyle, I'm interested to hear what you think about the Solstice event and this Team Go Rocket event. Now, I know the Team Rocket event's not like a lot really to react to. Red Rock's not exciting, right? But yeah, the I mean, Solstice I event is sweet. I care less about that. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of weird about the Solstice event. One, more Cosmog is good. Chance mm-hmm. to power up my Lunala, who is actually not good, but I'll do it anyways because I love Lunala. Uh, I need Nihilego candy. So maybe I'll actually do those raids. Pro- probably not, yeah. though. No one's going to be sending invites for that. <laughs> oh, I th- a lot of people are excited about the jellyfish, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice. Uh, I don't know what it's shiny is like a yellow beige, right? Something I thought like it's that. It's like a pink or something. It's pink. OK. Uh, not going to lie here. I think the spawns are bad. Really? Yeah. OK. I, I think oh, it is bad. yellow. You're right. It's gold. OK. It looks good, man. Yeah, the, the shiny is bad. It's good. I, you know, Fomantis shiny debut. You can't really be mad about a uh, new shiny. It's good. Positive. The night encounters are weird. I don't know. Why? You don't Oddish, think they're equal? Venipede. Fungus is good because Stardust, but it still it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know. You got you got two ghosts in the night encounter, and you got one ghost in the day encounter. Like what? And Murkrow, why is Murkrow in the day encounter? Why is that not in the night encounter? Yeah, you know, birds, man. I don't know. I, good, I don't know. The, good question. Outside of the new shiny, which is cool, there's not a whole lot to chase there. Of course, both day and night, you're going to have uh, Lunatone or Soul Rock if those are still in your target. So that's a, a positive. But the spawns, I think, are the weakest part of the Solstice event personally just like thematically or what's actually on offer uh what's on offer because it doesn't feel like it fits thematically Hmm. like the the theme is great i'm for it but like i feel like they didn't lean hard enough into it yeah maybe i mean looking at these pools though there are some interesting chances to target some shinies that you know i mean we've seen a lot of but they'll be really really vulnerable in this pool to being around more often right look like i'm just loin and i'm Benipede. expecting to see 80 percent ladybug and murkrow <laughs> I, I, i'm really so, hoping for a bunch of venipede i want shiny venipede really bad it is a good shiny i could yeah. use one more yeah a little coffee bean love it <laughs> yeah man <laughs> uh I, I couldn't care less about the Team Rocket one. So someone out there probably does, especially because I believe with this radar is the first time you can get a platinum Giovanni badge. Oh, okay. At 20 encounters. Really? All right. Don't quote me on that, but I, I know that there is a threshold we're about to break. So that's that's pretty neat that that's happening. I mean, I'm kind of surprised to hear you say all this because I know you're a Reggie Rock enthusiast. Like you love Reggie Rock. Like I know you've dressed up as Reggie Rock for like 12 years in Halloween running. You know, it's it's really easy when your costume is just go lay in the mud for an hour and then stand up. Um, but insert, insert the Reggie Rock sound from the anime. Right. Um, 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 um. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't like Reggie Rock. I Aww. don't like it. Personally, it's just not right. good. Shadow Gibble's awesome. That's great. You're probably yeah. going to see it one in every 50 grunts. Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's, it's going to have to be, it's either with one of the leaders, which would be, actually be preferable. Um, I mean, that or would actually be crazy. It'd be good because then you can target out the three, you know? Um, but, you know, they're, they, and they were also saying in their copy, if you're lucky, you may even encounter shiny, different shiny shadow Pokemon than normal. And that they can also come from grunts. Yeah. Different ones can also come from grunts. So, again, being kind of gray with their verbiage with this, like they were the last time. People were like, is it only ones that could have previously been shiny or can they all be shiny now? And this is still not as clear. The shiny mark is not there for several of them, which might be a clue. But at the same time, I'm just not confident anymore. Yeah. Same one way or the other. So. 
But uh, Shadow we'll Cartridge is going to be very good. So there's that. Yeah. How uh, good? Have you looked it up? Uh, no, it. I would have to go and figure out how to add Shadow to the game press site right now. So I'm not going to do that. But yeah, uh, it's just fairly good. Fairly good. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, Garchomp was already up there. So, yeah. you know, Shadow will, will affect its TDO negatively, I suppose. But, you know, it's it's straight DPS will be nuts. Mm -hmm. be great. Of course, Mega Garchomp is also really good and you can't have that shadow so there's still value to yeah. have good regular guard champs so don't throw those all away uh, yes yeah, it's, it's more likely that mega guard champ is better than than shadow guard yeah. champ yeah yeah mm -hmm. i do not have enough negative things to say about the 12k x so i just like we'll leave it at that i think you said you only have you mean you i, only I have? don't have enough negative things oh. to to like explain how I feel about it without it sounding really mean. I got to tell you, it's an improvement over the last time, though. There's there were two modifications and them just like reposting the same. list. Yeah, what they they pan champ can be shiny and they added in K. Yeah, this is not an improvement. It's an improvement. There's a shiny in there. They added a Pokemon. It's already got 11 into the, the pool. <laughs> this is look, I counted while you were reading off. This is a 12 K egg pool. There are 12 Pokemon in it. One for each K. You, you <laughs> have to fight six grunts and yeah. a leader yeah. and have space for it, which Ooh. the space is a lot easier to do now. And don't still. forget, now you also have to remember to to manually turn your radars on because they're apparently not doing that anymore. <laughs> oh, I mean, this is fair. Honestly, that that's actually an improvement, but. Oh, boo. Oh, I disagree. Yeah, no, because I would manually turn my radars off all the time. Okay. All right. That's all it. Right. And. Like on top of that, you've got six, seven trash spawn in the pool, which is not to say they're bad Pokemon. They're just Pokemon that make me ask, why am I hatching you? Like Volibi? Why a Volibi, Dino, Rupee, Dino. Yeah, we can probably Skrull, get Dino out of there. Uh, Absol, but it's Absol's eh, because it's kind of nice that there's a place to get it, but it's. Absol should be in 5k eggs. It just should not be in 12k's anymore. I'd be I'd be okay with Absol being in 10k's. Like if this pool was Lavatar, Sandial, Ponyard, Pancham, Salandite, and then pick a filler, whichever one you want to keep, that would feel a lot better. What if there was also a chance that they hatched and they were shadow? I mean, that would be not every time interesting for sure. It'd be a neat dimension because then it would it would make it more, more valuable, and more interesting for even the trashier spawns like Larvitar and and Dino, right? Like those fillers suddenly become it, more if it could be shadow and shiny. I think that you could keep the pool how it was, but I okay. still think it would be nicer Specifically because you have Pokemon you can only get in the pool here. Yeah. So. Oh, I, I do apologize. I'm not sure if anybody can actually hear it, but it is trying to rain quite a bit now. And uh, <laughs> I, th I think I think the microphone is set up right. But in case you do, please enjoy some some nice rain ASMR. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, what a, what a note to end on on 12 kilometer Look, egg. If you like 12 kilometer eggs. I do. It's more me. power to you. Don't give me more. I can't stand them. Uh, I currently have 11 rocket radars. Wow. <laughs> that I'm not doing. You know, partially because um, I don't want to do rockets, but partially because I don't want the 12K eggs until I'm ready to hatch them. Well, I mean, like at this point in time now, if you're if you're sitting on a bunch and you're like, OK, I should probably start working on these. Just wait for this event because the this pool is the same cool, but better. Yeah, I mean, probably at, at, at some point I will go through the effort of getting all 12, 12 Ks and I'll post the picture and everything. And I'll be yeah, like, oh you got to do it. That's right. But it's like taking then. a picture of your shoes before you go on a run. You know, it's the same sort of thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> OK, cool. Well, so much exciting news from GoFest to a new event at, to Squirtle Squad wow that's so much stuff so uh that's gonna do it for the news this week and we had so much stuff to cover uh we're actually going to be passing by gear up and pokalore again i know this is like the third week in a row that we've passed both of those up so 
we do apologize for that. But we want to get to everybody's responses for Pokepole. So without further ado, Kyle, take it away. So last episode's Pokepole was if Pokemon Go did a crossover event, which IP slash brand would you like to see? And what would that event look like in game? First response from Hisui and Ryan, and he said, Scooby-Doo. The in-game event would include lots of dog-based Pokemon and also ghost and dark type spawns. Ooh. There would be an in-game story where trainers collect clues to figure out a mysterious villain's identity. Trainers collect clues by finding and battling each of the members of Mystery Incorporated at Pokestops. Each member of the gang would have Pokemon suited to their character. Shaggy would have food-based Pokemon like Appleton, for example. The event would end with a special research day revealing Grimmsnarl as the mysterious villain, introducing the line into Go. Oh, I like that. Okay, Grimmsnarl. Dang. I was going to say you have to release this when you put Houndstone into the game. Oh, that's also yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, my gosh. All right. The next one is from J1718. And they said, I would do Sesame Street in Pokemon. Could be fun. Allow lessons for kids of all ages and be a joy to watch. Also, I prefer Blue's Clues over Bluey. Let's go. I mean, that's so that, that's definitely a regional thing. I'm pretty sure, but also that's, a generational I, thing. I, I, that's W. I'll, I'm going to take it <laughs> because I think anybody our age is going to say Blue's Clues, but anybody younger is mm. going to say Bluey. But Blue's Clues is is like cross generational. It's not the same now. Oh, man. no matter what anyone says, it's not the same since Steve left. I refuse. Change scares me. Yeah. <laughs> it's still Steve. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, next response from Triptando. They said Digimon. This event would feature the debut of Necrozma in raids alongside <laughs> all of the Ultra Beasts. Wild spawns would feature Pokemon like Totodile, Torchic, Gibble, Tyrant, Yamask, and Rufflet, since their evolutions could really be from either universe. But the real focus would be the debut of Shadow Drudagon in Tier 3 raids. It doesn't get more Digimon than Drudagamon. Drudigimon. Drudigimon? Drudigimon? Drudigimon. I don't know. Drudigimon? I- Hmm. <laughs> I, I definitely I think that first I should definitely be an O and it should be it should be Drudagon. Drudig- I can't know. Drudigimon. No, maybe I don't I know. like Drudigimon. Drudigimon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's I, I like the idea of Necrozma and the Ultra Beast because they're like Digimon because they're yeah, a lot I like agree. Digimon. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree 100 percent. That's like that would be the way to do it. <laughs> Um, but like all of those Pokemon that are, that are wild spawns would have to have like Digimon and like Digidestin partner costumes. Oh my you god! You know, Rufflet could be um, uh, not Poyomon. No, not Poyomon. What was the one that turns into Bergamon? That was Sora's. I can never remember her name. My knowledge of Digimon is a surface level at best. There could be a lady bot that has a, a Tentamon costume. That would be perfect. Come uh, uh, on. There's a there's a Digimon that looks like Maractus, right? I don't yeah. remember its name. But yeah, yeah, there is. You could do an event and have that featured globally in rates. That's right. Oh, man. That'd be sweet. An Arcanine <laughs> that's got a Leomon costume. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> shadow Pokemon Raids, Unite, but they all, have, they all have black gears, but they're Shadow Raids. Whoa. <laughs> all right. We're going to move on. Next up is from Rotten Tanuki, and they said, 30 new costume Pikachu in each of the NBA jerseys. No. No. Please. Please, no. It's a good idea, but no thank you. (laughs) Oh, my God. Someone out there would get one of each shiny, and they'd be insane. They would be. be. Very impressive. That's You just, like, take screenshots of that, and then you, like, put that up in a glass case (laughs) in real life, you know? Yeah. all right. Last one comes in the form of an email from Arkham. They said, hello, Chris and Kyle. Hello. My crossover dream would be with Persona slash I'm going to Shimigami Tensin. I'm assuming SMT. That's what that is. You got me, man. I don't know. Uh, two separate 
genres game series though i'm not sure who would want to catch a jack frost also i'm guessing he wouldn't be a green shiny sorry that i've tripped you up chris DeFi handled it well this week though he ho and sorry for the long email arkham aka ted shimigami tenson i've heard is, is a great game i still would like to play it it's it's very it's, it's pokemon so. Yeah. Every time I see screenshots of people talking about Persona, I'm like, I would probably love this. Yeah. I, I try my it. my biggest grief with Persona is it's slow. And by yeah. like, like it's very long. It is a 150 hour RPG. And I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What happens when the visual novel part loses its novelty? <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. For this week's Pokepo, we have. Are shadow raids more engaging than regular raids and or do you find them more fun? If so, why? Do you want to go first, Chris? Sure. I'd be happy to. They are more engaging, but I haven't made up my mind as to whether or not they're more fun yet. I'd have to do more of them. I think it has potential to be more fun because there's more stuff to care about. And I think the idea of tying an outside item into it that you have to collect to then therefore use is neat. But I think it has to be tighter than the way it worked for Mewtwo weekend because there was some there was some user error and lots of misconceptions about how it worked, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, And you didn't we did not have Articuno this week, right? Because we had we did. We did. We had it for some time. Yeah, during the weekend. Didn't do any. No, I completely forgot about it, actually. There was that raid makeup day, yeah. and then there was Axu Community Day, and... Oh, we didn't even talk about Axu Community Day. <laughs> no, we didn't. Oh, my gosh. Really quick, how many <laughs> shines did you get? Uh, I got 16. Okay, you didn't get to play very long, though, right? I played 90 minutes. I played about half of it. Uh, I got, like, 1.5 million experience, though, so that was pretty great. Oh, nice. I'm on track, incensed. To be level 47 by GoFest. Okay. We're all going to hold it to you (laughs) or hold you to it. Yeah, there we go. Um, I played for all three hours except for like the last 15-ish minutes, 20-ish minutes. I got 32 shiny Axu. No hundos, but that's fine. I already had them. And I didn't need to change them because breaking swipe ain't good. So good deal. Anyway, back to your regular scheduled (laughs) (laughs) Pokeball. Uh. As for me, shadow raids are more engaging than regular raids. It's hard to deny that they are more difficult. There Mm -hmm. is potentially an extra element, especially if you have less people. I don't think they're any more fun. (laughs) You've made up your mind already. Yeah, I have made up my mind. They're not more fun. The only value or sense of fun or anything like that that comes from them is what Pokemon you're getting out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I have no intention of raiding Articuno. And if the next two months are Zapdos and Moltres, I will also not do either of those. All right. I already have them, and I don't particularly need more, although I could get more Moltres. Yeah. I The entire value of the Shadow Raid experience is in what Pokemon is in the raid. Yeah, I think they're making a big mistake in trotting. Well, actually, I don't think they're making a big mistake. I think that probably this first month of them like trying to feel out, well, the, who's going to actually do this on the weekends if it's just around and only on the weekends and stuff as an option? Like, how feasible is it? And they're trying to get some data. I think the team birds is a very smart way to go. What I don't think is a smart way to go is for us to be seen. And this seems like it's not connected, but it definitely is the Reggie rock coming back for Giovanni instead of something new for this new rocket event, because they, I would want, even while they're still testing their baseline and figuring out how shadow raids work, I want shadow Pokemon to become more exciting over time so that Mm -hmm. I have more of an opportunity to get excited about shadow raids and look forward to it. Once it's actually figured out what they want to do with them. I think here's the biggest problem that we have right now with shadow raids. They're so new and it's a problem that already stands out. Mm -hmm. Shadow legendaries don't come out very often. Right. At one shadow raid legendary a month, you've got six months, nine months worth of shadows before you have to repeat them. Yeah. And four, three of those months are Reggie's that people will not want to do an extensive amount. Yeah. They're so much better off just having them rotate for like the three weeks, all three, you know? Yeah. 
and it's and you know we get one new shadow from Giovanni. What every, is it right now? Every, two a year, maybe. Yeah, every six months right now. Yeah, maybe every three months. We've gotten new Reggies each season here. This is right. true. So, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird to me that there are some glaring flaws that you can see right now that won't become a flaw for six months. So I guess it's like that's six months from now's problem. I just feel like I feel like shadow raids outside of a special event, like when Mewtwo's around for the introductory, that makes sense. I feel like shadow raids should be supplemental to the go takeover experience. And right now it feels the opposite. Yeah. And I think I'm, I totally agree with that, but they don't want to do go takeovers very often. We barely get them once a season and that's not going to be frequent enough for shadow raids to exist. Yeah. Yeah. That's, would agree. A, that's a problem, which I'm make shadow, make rocket takeovers more often. I'm for that. Most people are for that. Yeah, like one I, weekend I a month would be good, I think. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be big. Giovanni could come back once a season, but, you know, doing the, the rocket takeover where they're around more often, you can see new things in raids and you have an opportunity to see in frustration, which is really kind of the big thing for people that care about it. Right. Um, yeah, once a month seems like a good cadence. And then one super rocket radar a season seems like a good cadence. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's going to be interesting to see how shadow raids progress. Yeah. But the current trajectory is not appealing to me personally. I certainly will not make time to go out and do them on the weekend, especially because it takes, you know, five people with bricks to do it or yeah. you know yeah. nine or ten without it i guess i don't even i think you might actually might need more depending it depends on now what tier. but we're talking about not mewtwo oh yeah for articuno and if you're running uh, like rock articuno yeah. moltres zapdos should yeah. be okay with less zapdos might give you the most trouble because you won't have four times but yeah it should still be doable because there's a lot of really strong rock DPS that we all have. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, good deal. Okay. Well, dear listener, if you have an answer to this week's Pokepole question, which is once more, are shadow raids more engaging than regular raids and or do you find them more fun? And if so, why? Also, feel free to answer why not. Um, why not? And you can answer this question we've posted on Twitter at GoCast Podcast. You can also send us an email to mail at GoCastPodcast.com. Send us a voicemail to 262-586-7717. You can also answer the question on the Spotify mobile app. You will see a little question there. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and leave it in a comment. If you're a patron of ours, we have an entire Discord channel dedicated to the Pokeball question as well. So lots of avenues to take if you'd like to respond. But speaking of emails and voicemails, Kyle, where are we? It's time for emails. That's right. And not one, but two voicemails. Make it up for a couple of weeks, I suppose. <laughs> this first one is from Slips Slimely. Hi, Chris and Kyle. Slips Slimely here. Uh, I've emailed you guys before. Figured it'd be more fun to leave a voicemail this time. Uh, currently driving to the doctors, and I've been meaning to call you guys asking a couple of questions. I am a huge fan of the costume Pokemon in Pokemon Go. I think they're just really cute, you know. Um, I go out of my way every event that they come into to try and get one of each. I'm actually also the guy who posts the really dirty-looking <laughs> infographics on the Silk Road subreddit. Um, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on them. I, I like a lot of them, but so many feel really bland sometimes and the extreme reuse of Pikachu can be kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. um, do you think we might ever see them come to home? Do you think they'll be stuck in Pokemon Go forever? <laughs> What's your favorite ones? Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Shiny vibes. Ooh, good question. Oh, man. Good yeah, question. Is costume a tag you can use? It is. Yeah, costume. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. I got to tell you, my, my view on this is rather concise. Okay. Um, if, okay. if it's a lazy costume, I think it's the worst. 
Um, but if it's a fun costume, like an Aerodactyl wearing a satchel or Explorer hat Pikachu with that cute whale or water, bo- water bottle or yeah. cowboy hat Snorlax, even that one is low effort, but it's really funny. Yes. Like that's that's like good to me. It's uh like it's a physical comedy in that sense because Snorlax is huge and he's got a hat right. on. It's a little it's tiny funny. little hat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um I'm in a similar vein. We dunk on hat Pokemon a lot because it's they're all over the place sometimes. Yeah. But they're fine, especially if you like to go for them. It's great. The the biggest issue I have is that there's no easy way to organize it. They take up a lot of inventory space. They do. And they tend to dominate events, which like if the hat is the only appeal in the event, that makes me like the hat less than if the event event happens to contain a hat Pokemon. But and, and if it doesn't persist through evolutions too, I I just like it a that lot. That definitely less. makes it less. Yes. Yeah. But good hat Pokemon are very good. You know, Explore Hat Pikachu is fantastic. It's it's a very fun one. Um, even this is funny. Uh, Lapras with a scarf. It's a it's a bow, but Lapras with a scarf because that's <laughs> what we call it. It's called. Yeah, is good. That's a good costume. Like it, it adds something of substance to the Pokemon that looks pleasing to look at. Is the team never. leader Flare Lapras was a bad example. That was bad. Yeah. yeah. See, that's a bad. Those, all three of them. I mean, so the Ponytail was the best, but it was still bad. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> um, yeah. They're never going to come to home. These are stuck and go forever. There's no way. Yeah. And if they do come to home, they'd be stuck in home, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Which honestly, that'd be OK. If I could keep one of each yeah. in home and have it never go anywhere. OK. I yeah, honestly I probably, would be perfectly fine with that. I would probably just have boxes labeled and dedicated to that, yeah. honestly, which would not be a bad thing. It'd be to be out of my Pokemon Go storage, that'd be nice. So, mm-hmm. all right. Yeah. The final part was your favorite hat Pokemon. Oh, was it? I thought it was just if we'd see it coming to home or not. My favorite is, yep. I think, it's oh man, what a good question. I think explore hat Pikachu, honestly, because I want that Whalemer water bottle in real life so bad. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's there's several really good ones. So I really like the Sempasu Chill Flower Dust Skills, too. Those are good. I really do like the like Frankenstein Gengar. Oh, because yeah. that's that's like a real plushie as well that they base yeah. that costume on, which is very cool. So I, I like that. But I also really, really like the 2020 Slowpoke. Oh, that was it, funny. That yeah. I think that is right up there for the best ones they've ever done. Yeah. 2020, 2021 Slowpoke Slowbro. Yeah. Very I funny. Agree. What about the uh, Witch Hat Gengar? It is, it is good, but it's not as good as the other one. Yeah, I would agree there. 100%. I have one of those. I have three of the other one. <laughs> and the party hat Gengar is the worst, but it has fond place because it was from a raid day. So party hat Nidoran or Nidorino was good because it's, yep. it's just a better horn. Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much. Slip Slimely. Our next one is from Crazy Cobra. Hey, go cast. Um, hey, so I'm working towards leveling up to level 37 so that I can nominate Pokestops. And I've actually discovered quite a few tips along the way. So I thought I'd share them for anybody else who might want to hear them. Um, so first, um, a lot of times when I'm at home, since I have no Pokestops nearby, I would quickly run out of Pokeballs. And it turns out, um, sometimes, it hasn't worked all the time for me, but every once in a while, whenever I use my daily adventure incense, it just randomly gives me 30 Pokeballs. Oh, yeah. This works four out of five times for me, and I think it may be a thing that happens when you don't have Pokeballs. That's right. Or maybe mm-hmm. when you don't have 30. I'm not exactly sure what the criteria is, but... For some reason, whenever I'm low on Pokeballs, it gives me 30 when I use the Daily Adventure Incense. So that one, that's one that's been really helpful. And um, there's another y- useful one. Whenever I, um, let's see, so whenever I search for Pokemon to transfer, I have a pretty long chain of things that I want to filter out of it. I don't want to transfer any three-star Pokemon, any four-star Pokemon, things like that. I have a pretty mm-hmm. long line of those. And so for iOS users, um, I've discovered another way to do that that makes it much faster. So you can go into shortcuts, and you can make a custom shortcut that will copy that text for you 
so that whenever you say a command word to Siri, she'll she will she will put it on your <laughs> clipboard so you can just paste it into the search bar. That's oh, helpful because okay. I usually search for other things and it's not in my research for. Anyways, and then finally, um, for Pokestops, I use the Campfire app. And even though you can't see Pokestops on there, what you can do is you can switch it to the NBA game on there instead of Pokemon Go. And then you're able to see all of the different waypoints, which gives you a general idea of where Pokestops are. Oh my now, gosh. that one's been really helpful for me since oh, I'm wow. about to go to camp. Um, anyways, um, so yeah, good luck, everybody. Um, and thank you for the great podcast. Bye. What a great voicemail. Okay, that was all that was, that was all really good information. So yeah, yeah, the first one we can we can confirm. Yes. Kyle and I can both confirm. Yeah. That it, it's I'm I'm not sure if it's if at you, zero or under thirty. I if think you it's have less 30. than thirty combined of all three oh, Pokeballs. That's right. Yeah. Then Be, you will get thirty. Because the Daily Adventure Incense was designed with real players in mind. And that mm-hmm. also comes with the idea that you probably don't have any Pokeballs. Yeah. So and it's yeah. nice because if you hoof it. On a daily adventure in sense, you can get 30 spawns. Yep. Be very difficult. Like you you gotta move, but you, you can, can do, do it. it. Yep. And then the next one of uh the shortcuts on iOS. Yeah, I just use my notepad app, so I could probably use shortcuts and cut out like one or two steps. Yeah, not but... gonna lie. There was a conversation in the Discord uh last Friday, I think, about search strings and stuff and people just sharing them, and I'm like, whoa. Hold up. Someone tell me which one of these I should actually use and I'll just use it. I don't I don't yeah. want to have to think about it. Just somebody tell me which one is is ideal here. Some people write up different ones for events and stuff like that. Yeah. Too. Like, no, oh. no. I just I just want they're like it's like anything that has low attack but is uh not from three days ago and it has high HP, high defense, stuff like that. Oh or gosh other search strings that's like two star filters i'm like all right i need i need one of these i don't know which one it is but i need one <laughs> i'll send you the one that i have which is like just a generic pvp one mm-hmm. um that i just use and then i transfer everything we also got to make sure it excludes like like hundos obviously but you can also mark those manually i do check yeah far more yeah. frequently than i should for hundos i check four star first and then i do my pvp check and yeah. then after that then you know so Good deal. Good deal. Great voicemail. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Um, oh, and also, I guess using Campfire, which is the NBA, uh, NBA Jam, NBA World. NBA Jam is a really old game. NBA, NBA World. World. Or Live. All like Stars. That. All Stars. All Stars. Yeah. The NBA game. That's smart. I wouldn't have thought of that. It's NBA All World. <laughs> oh, wow. We were, <laughs> we were not right. My goodness. Gosh. Yeah. Anyway. Cool, cool. Thank you very much for the voicemail. And uh, while we are running long, we're going to probably read one or two emails because we have a bunch to go through. Again, like I said the last time we had an episode, I owe y'all a mailbag. We need to catch up. So I think we will go with this email here from Drew2. Hi, Kyle and Chris, longtime listener, longtime long emailer. I wanted to affirm your recommendation of battling the team leaders is the best way to earn hearts for your buddy and add on a tip to use as well. To earn the heart for your buddy, you don't actually need to complete the entire trainer battle. As soon as the opposing Pokemon starts attacking, you can simply back out of the battle and it will still count towards earning the heart. You can earn all three hearts in around one minute. Speaking of saving time, I wanted to throw out another tip for you regarding gifts. Immediately after you click the send or receive button for a gift, click the X button at the bottom of the screen and it will back out and skip the animations while still completing the task. You can send and receive all of your gifts in just a couple of minutes. No more excuses. Sorry for the long email, Drew2. What if I told you we already knew that about (laughs) gifts and we still choose not to do it? (laughs) I I will say whenever I do do gifts, I do that for sure. It still takes too long. Not not because of animations necessarily, but because the interface itself is very slow. Yeah, yeah. And it's not an exceptionally long amount of time. This is true. But like, I'm supposed to be playing a game here. And that's the kind of thing I got to remind myself when I end up doing things that feel more like chores instead of having fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do this. I think like three out of the past seven days, I actually send gifts to people and open. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once I'll tell you guys what, once there's a compelling seven kilometer egg pool, I open a lot of gifts. 
So that'll be that'll be your tell. But anyway, thank you very much, Drew, too, for that email. Kyle, do you want to read this next one from Nate Dog? Yeah. Cool. All right. Next email from Nate Dog. And they said, hi, y'all. Dropping my two cents into the wishing well. That is the email segment. Love it. These purification bricks mechanic needs work. It's unclear if you've successfully used one, how many have been used overall, etc. It's half baked. It's a hundred percent true. There's no argument That's right. at all. It's yeah. I actually like the Ivy floor being six, 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 even with the lower Ivy floor, decent Ivy spreads can happen. And if it had stayed 10, 10, 10, it would have felt like a purified hundo handout party. I think that's right. This, this is, yeah, you're right. It, it feels bad to say that, but it is true. People were confused by the initial three star shadow raid lineup of Bayleaf, Croconaw, and Quelava. This selection was significant because they were first sh- shadow mons ever in Pokemon Coliseum. Niantic has a huge opportunity here to show people there is some intention behind choices like this by explaining things more in their event announcements. They're being too clever by half. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. I, yeah. I that that is true. I do remember that about Coliseum, but it's just you think you're smart, but and, it doesn't. And that could be the case that that's yeah. why they chose them, right? But th- th- in order to like publicly say that that's why they would probably have to jump through so many hoops that it's like Maybe. not worth it, you Maybe. know? I don't know. Coliseum is twenty two years old now. Yeah. 20, but- I don't know. TPC is is Maybe. really, Maybe. really controlling of that stuff. So who knows? For the email? For Shadow Mewtwo, the all weekend availability was a blessing and a curse. The concentrated time window of a raid day brings trainers together because they have to coordinate. Without that, you can get more raids, but it's hard to keep a sustained group effort going that long. In my area, Saturday has a had a strong start with full lobbies Sunday after the hype had died a little. It was a lot of solo trainers trying to form pickup groups most of the day with little luck. I think part of the problem with that in particular was there weren't as many raids. So people were not able to coordinate and stay in a group, even if they found one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I'm not going to drive 15 minutes that direction because I live 30 minutes in the other direction. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that happened a lot. It's fun to raid in person, and my local Discord did add some new trainers. We all sort of grudgingly admitted that Niantic won this round, though no one was in approval of the recent remote pass changes. Sorry for the legitimately long email, Nate Dog. So the the question here, I think the takeaway for me is, grudgingly admit Niantic won this round. This is true. Mm. They, they did. But would they have won without Shadow Mewtwo? They don't win. They don't win with Articuno. They will not win with Zapdos. It's such a good point. Like, like it's oh, man. It's so disingenuous to use any of this data, in my opinion, as a proof of concept. Even obviously, they probably made a decent amount of money, but nothing like what they have. They the they past. won. They won in so far as we were all out together doing stuff in person. But it's because. For the same reason that you're that you're making, that it invalidates it to make that point, that elite raids too, they were gonna be in person anyway. So yeah. of course it's gonna look like it was successful because because of that. When yeah. we see a new five star raid in gyms, like ready to go, flat out, not an event, not an in person only thing, then we'll see sentiment that we can track. Then we'll see, you know, bottom lines and what that means. And yeah. Stuff like and that. we'll see but, uh, raid invites to see how many people are actually doing right. it, you know, are, were they trying to get us outside to have fun? And did we do that? Yeah, we absolutely did. But that's because it was designed like that. Not because the changes were good. Right. Which yeah. I feel like is what Nate dog is saying. Right. Yeah. Um, absolutely. On, on it's super effective, which, you know, I listen to every week. They've <laughs> made a great point that there are, ways to get people to come out and just kneecapping the ways that people get to stay in will not actually make people go out. Mm -hmm. You know, there's needs to be more incentives for going out and shadow Mewtwo is one of them, but it's not a sustainable one. Yeah. 
that's kind of the big one. Where's the sustainable change that we kind of want to see? It'll be telling if they do like a raid weekend with Rayquaza and they're like, hey, these gyms will, you know, all have Rayquaza for these three hours, but you got to be in person. Like that'll be super telling. And I think that'll be have a lot of backlash. Um, but it made sense because this was debuting a new system, yada, yada. It was very yep. similar to Elite Raids because we had Mewtwo and Elite Raids to begin with. So the whole thing like kind of made sense. But I don't know. I don't know how this extrapolates out into... <laughs> further you know uh use cases or examples yeah, yeah i i agree yeah but thank you very much nate dog for a great email all right we do have other emails as well but i like i said i'm gonna have to owe y'all a mailbag because we are running along so dear listener if you would like to send us an email or a voicemail just like these fine folks did you can by sending it to mail at gocastpodcast.com or calling our number 262-586-7717. You can also visit our website for all things GoCast, gocastpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at gocastpodcast. If you'd like to help support the show monetarily, you can do so for any amount monthly of your choosing uh, over at Patreon. That's spelled P A T R E O N dot com and then go forward slash go cast podcast and speaking of patrons shout out to our elite trainer tier patrons thank you to Bo, daniel Lori, michael ozzy arkham tish marvin and mimi sports Jesu and ryan thayer jason justin charles modders lee william brandon ethan steven nick kelvin our favorite listener drew two camo the ugly rock jacob and victoria thank you very much for your generous support and helping us keep the digital lights on and all that good stuff but if you'd like to help support the show and, you know, hey, monetary support's not in the cards for you, you can, of course, leave us a review on any platform that you can do so. And if you did, we would love you for it. Please, it helps us out a lot. That uh, makes us more discoverable. All that good stuff makes us look popular. And isn't that the most <laughs> important thing in today's social climate? I think so. All right. Thanks very much for that ahead of time. Before we get out of here, Mr. Kyle, we got to set some goals. The thing we've got coming up now is this Horizon event, right? So it's this weekend and the Team Go Rocket takeover as well. Lots of neat stuff to plan around. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the Team Go Rocket takeover doesn't start till next week after we record, technically. Oh, okay. So don't right. set a Giovanni goal or something. <laughs> oh, no, I won't do that. Okay. Really, really just completely locked up on this one. I think we can both say we're going to do Cosmog research, right? We want to do that. Both. Hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to try to. I'm gonna, My goal is going to be to do both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're not obnoxious, I think. Oh, and Fomantis is shiny come out, right? Ugh. I got to. I'm going to yeah. hunt that, man. I'm going to hunt that. Um, And 50 eggs for me. All right. So I'm my entire say. suite of three, while you're still thinking, is Cosmog special research times two. Yeah. Special cosmog research times two shiny fomantis and 50 eggs what about you uh i'm gonna say cosmog special research not gonna say times two because i'm i'm wondering what the which one of them is going to be harder oh yeah <laughs> oh oh no what if it's time gated you're right oh no that's fine i've made the commitment I, i'm expecting the free one to be more difficult to complete so oh maybe uh one shiny any shiny whatever it may be okay and four hundred thousand experience that will put me at 16 million out of 18 million to 47 you're getting so, close man you're getting close yeah getting close to the next uh 21 million that i need so do you remember how long ago i hit level 50 uh you hit level 50 before go fest last year right i at at the Ultra Beast event, actually. Oh, in you LA. Did? Okay, so then in September. Yes. No, that's November. Sorry. Okay. So that's 176 million, right? Yeah. I have 206 million right now. That's that's a that's a lot of experience. 30 so million I, experience in eight months is pretty yeah. good. My question to you is what's your excuse? <laughs> I don't play this game that much. <laughs> I, 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 okay, well, I mean I, I don't that, actually have an excuse. That does track. That's fine. <laughs> the desire to play Pokemon Go is significantly lower than it has been in the past. I'm not going to lie. That's true. This past week, though, I did play quite a bit. It was nice to see the number on the global challenge for great catches or whatever go up. 
nice catches. That was nice. I liked that. I was looking at my list. I got somebody on my list. Uh, I I I don't know if you listen, but I'm pretty sure it was Pogo Milo out there. Is that 3,600 oh, yeah. uh-huh. throw? Uh, nice throws. Milo. I'm like. Okay, mm-hmm. I have some hardcore players on my my friends list, and that was at the top. So, <laughs> pretty incredible, incredible. Yeah. I also saw that and went, whoa, what? <laughs> Great That's stuff. That's a yeah, yeah. It's just that that was a lot. It's impressive. I think I had like three hundred by the end of it. <laughs> I like it. I like the casual like flex that that lets us do. I wish we had that more often. Like once a month, do a little something for like it's, just one of the events. You know, it's very anti Nintendo though. Nintendo doesn't like that. Yeah, so. but it's like you don't get anything for being high on the quote unquote leaderboard. You know, Nintendo won't let you have a scoreboard in Pokemon Unite. Yeah. That's so right. there's no way they want that to be a regular occurrence and go. They also won't let you have optimized menus in Pokemon Unite. What's that about? Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. We're I think we're throwing uh, stones in the glass house here as a Pokemon Go podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and I can't I can't think of a better way to leave this episode than on that note. So, we will see you all next week for episode 240. Good luck with your Solstice Horizons and your Tocket your Tocket Rakeover, your Rocket Takeover. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye.